Hi, I'm Gianna Volpe, and thank you for listening to The Heart of the East End on 88.3 WLIWFM, the show where we get to the heart of any matter at hand with folks from all walks of life on Long Island's only local NPR radio station. We stream online at WLIW.org slash radio and welcome your comments, questions, and collaborations of all kinds on the heart of the East End. Thursday segment underwritten by Guild Hall. We don't just read gossip magazines here on the Heart of the East End. Thanks to this segment, we get uh, a book in just about every week. This one's brand new book by Jeff Sussman, Holocaust Fighters, Boxers, Resisters, and Avengers, uh, combining two of your passions. Jeff, thank you for coming back on the program to talk about another absolutely information and history packed book uh, that you've been working on how long how long did this one take you to research and write a, a little over a year i'm not surprised at all you know uh, so hitler never boxed but he was certainly a fan he never boxed but he but but he he wanted everybody else to box. <laughs> right he so he he expounds on the importance of it in mein kampf insisting it should be taught in schools he delighted in aryan pugilists that one fights against the other anyone non aryan his was a movement right. fueled by conspiracy theories and the repression of truth that forced reality to be and represented what it simply wasn't. I was struck by the fact that it was so hard to square the idea of a superior Aryan with the fact that, say, Jewish uh, pugilist Max Baer had his name and image banned by Joseph Goebbels after brutally beating Max Schmeling. Were there other examples and tactics like this that occurred through that time? Absolutely. I, I mean, th there was a... Uh a terrible case of a, uh, a gypsy boxer, uh, and, and, and a gypsy is really a colloquial word. Um, there, were, there were two forms of gypsy. One was Roma, one was Sintai. And uh, the Sintai boxer, his name was Johan Trollman. He was a terrific boxer, and, and he was very fast on his feet and could dance around the ring. And uh, the uh, German uh, style of boxing at that time was to stand in the center of the ring and just throw punches. Well, well Johan Trollman, beat every Nazi opponent he fought, and, and he won uh, the title uh, of, of champion. And the Nazis were so upset about it that the next day they took the title away from him. And when he fought again, almost to make fun of the Nazis, he dyed his hair blonde, and he put baking powder, like baking powder all over his body. In other words, look at me. I'm a white, blonde-haired Aryan uh, in the, now. And, and, and he went to the ring and a lot of, he caused a lot of people to laugh at what he was doing, but it, it very much upset the Nazis. I, I can imagine that 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 in particular, this was uh, Hitler was really he was not very he, he got very whiny and complainy uh, when you know I think about you talk about Jesse Owens beating the, his Nazi counterparts at the 1936 Olympics. Uh, Hitler quote was highly annoyed by the series of triumphs by the marvelous. A colored American runner. Obviously, this is a quote that I'm reading uh, from Albert Speer, uh, Jesse Owens. Uh, he, Hitler said with a shrug that their physics were stronger than those of civilized whites and hence should be excluded from future games. Absolutely a barbaric way to, to refer to any person. Although, you know, what's interesting is when I read that, I thought about uh, some of the arguments that folks are are presenting nowadays when you consider when you talk about uh, transgender athletes uh, 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 competing in the Olympics and uh, this idea of excluding them and I'm and I'm seeing the parallels there and I'm thinking geez that's 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 a a, a parallel that can be made. Well, there's always been, uh, you know, by those in power, there's always been a fear that those who are different from them may show them up and they may be superior to them and they'll do whatever they can to exclude those kind of people, whether they're, they're uh, blacks, transgender, uh, uh, Jews, Jews, right. whatever. They don't want them in their club competing with them because they may show them up. 
It's ridiculous. Then what is competition for? <laughs> exactly. I, I, I mean, I mean, what they want is is, is they want a, a non-competitive competition. Yeah, they just they just want to they just want to show off. It's like it's like any uh, it's geez if if there were social social media back then, you know, it's like this is this is my page. This should be all about me. Exactly. All right, so let's let's talk That's about exactly what it is. Let's talk about the Avengers, also known as the NACOM. Three thousand Nazi war criminals hunted down and killed between the Avengers and subsequently specially trained Mossad agents. What was the process like, and how discerning were they about targets? You know, I'm thinking, did they take into account variables such as age, disposition, or whether the workers were volunteers? You know, I think about. Uh, you mentioned the trials to bring some of such people to justice, uh, which continue today. Uh, just recently, a 96-year-old woman uh, just weeks ago fled ahead of her trial, answering to charges as a Nazi stenographer and typist. She'd been a juvenile at the time. And we look at last summer, a 93-year-old former SS guard who was 17 at the time of his employment at a concentration camp responsible for some 65,000 deaths given two years probation. Um, what are your thoughts? I, I went a little too far. We didn't, we have to talk about who the Avengers were and whatnot, but, uh, it's, it's incredible to think, you know, people think about the Holocaust being this thing of long ago. But when you consider the fact that the trials continue today, uh, it's certainly a, a relevant topic. Absolutely. And, you know, at, at, at some point, regardless of your age, you have to make a decision, a moral and ethical decision about what you're going to do. And, and you know, there are some people who don't care. I mean, they, they don't have a conscience and they can kill somebody and it, and it doesn't make any difference to them. There are other people who, when faced with that choice, they would be appalled and they would say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll do something but I'm not going to do that. So were the the Avengers? So let's talk about who the Avengers were, and and were they were they discerning at all? When you consider, you know, some some of the people were not volunteers and uh, were forced into such work. Are you saying that there there is no excuse? Uh, what are your views on on such things? What what should a a person? Uh, what sort of a punishment? It fits someone. I guess everyone is different. Although, um, you know, what do you think? Well, y y you know, y you can um, choose to say, I'm, "I'm not going to do." Just as you, you know, some people who are when they we had a draft for the U.S. Army, and and some people who were against war and against killing, they became conscientious right. objectors, or, or or they went into the medics and 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 rather uh. than shoot somebody. They worked in an ambulance corps to save uh, people. So, you know, we all have choices that we can make, and, and, and we can always say, well, I, I had no choice. You know, I was just doing my duty, which was a typical uh, Nazi excuse for, for committing heinous crimes. You know, why are the trials, like I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, why, why are some people, why did it take so long? For example, that we're, we're seeing people in their late 90s or, you know, even older at just facing uh, their trials now. Well, they were very clever about hiding uh, who they were and what their actions were for many years. Um, y you know, they, they were in effect incognito. They, they adopted uh, false uh, personas and they doctored their, their records so that people wouldn't know uh, what they had done and who they were. And, and eventually, with some of them, they've been found out. You know, along the lines of of not simply accepting the fate that, uh, you know, is being forced uh, upon you, uh, not all of those imprisoned in concentration camps did that. You mentioned of 900 inmates who attempted to escape, 155 succeeded. Is that overall or is was that in uh, one instance at one concentration camp? I, I believe that was over. I mean, it was very, very hard uh, to, to, to escape. There were, you know, double electric fences. There were uh, attack train guards, uh, dogs rather. Uh, there were guards around. And if, if you were caught trying to escape, it meant immediate death. Right. Um, 
there were a lot of people who felt, yeah, you know, maybe I can survive this. You know, maybe I can, you know, if we're free in two years, maybe I can make it through the next two years. Now, let's let's talk about the pugilists. The, the, the boxers forced to fight for the entertainment of their Nazi captors. Uh, there's sort of a half-assed parallel out there in modern media right now with the, the Squid Games on Netflix. And I, and I only use that term because... Uh, in in some ways, you can certainly argue that people were not forced, that they were actually volunteers. Uh, but it's the gladiator type thing, this, these are boxers that uh, are need that are forced to fight one another. But uh, talk, Jeff, about how exactly how high the stakes were in these fights. Well, I mean, it, 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 it was terrible. You know, I spoke to the sons of, of two of these boxers, and, and it was a real moral dilemma for them. If they didn't fight as the, their Nazi guards instructed them to, they would have been hauled off to the gas chambers and killed. However, those who lost the fights, their opponents, were then hauled off to the gas chambers and killed. Right. So, you know, it, 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 it left them uh, feeling very uh, morally... Um, a, a, a transfixed. I mean, wh what am I going to do? Right. You, know, you know, should I fight this person, or or should I just give up my life and die? And they had a very strong survival instinct, so they chose to to fight. But yet, at the same time, they felt terrible. The person they were fighting against was then going to be killed if, if that person lost the fight. Talk about survivor's guilt. I imagine that uh, some of that had to be at play for some of the people that were uh, forced into work. You know, I can't imagine uh, what the threats were like uh, and the tactics used, uh, you know, and, and as far as the boxers are concerned, I, you, you look at, Sal how do I say it, Salomo Aruch, 200 bouts Salomo at Aush Aruch. Baruch. Salomo Aruch, he, he, he was a Greek boxing champion. 200 bouts at Auschwitz. So, that is, uh, so does that mean he won 200 fights or uh, were were some of them not killed if they lost he, he won 200 fights wow and some of them may not have been uh, dragged off immediately to the gas chambers but they may have been slowly starved to death in in, in any case whether long term or short term they didn't survive please talk about uh Witold Pilecki I know that this is not Exactly. He's not a boxer, but I definitely wanted his name mentioned for anyone who doesn't know who this person was. He, he, he was an incredible heroic man. He was a, a, a Polish Catholic, a member of the Polish Army, who was uh, uh, very anti-fascist and fought in the underground against the Nazis. And when he heard rumors about what was going on at Auschwitz, he put himself in a position of being arrested and taken to Auschwitz. So, in, in effect, he volunteered to be a prisoner of Auschwitz and remained an inmate there for two and a half years and, and sent out, managed to send out secret messages to the exiled Polish Home Army that was in, in London at the time. And after two and a half years, he decided that it was time to escape. He and, and, and another uh, prisoner managed to escape, and they got and they got back to uh, to Warsaw, where they uh, joined the uh, Polish Home Army again, and 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 fought against the Nazis. But he also wrote a report to reveal to the world exactly what was going on uh, at Auschwitz, the terrible atrocities that the world didn't know about. What was sad about uh, we told Pilecki is that after the war when uh, the Soviet Union gained control of Poland, he was looked upon as a traitor to right. communism because he was both an anti-fascist and an anti-communist. And the Soviet uh, puppet government imprisoned him and tortured him, and uh, they pulled out his fingernails, they pulled out his toenails, uh, they did everything Brutal. they possibly could to, to torture this man. And they forced him to sign a confession saying he had been, um, that, that he betrayed uh, Stalin and, and, and the entire uh, Soviet government. And then they executed him. And for as long as the Soviets controlled Poland, 
he became a non-person after his death. However, after the fall of the Soviet Union and Poland uh, became an independent country again, he became recognized as a hero. And there's now a statue of him uh, in Warsaw honoring his heroics uh, during World War II. That, that's just, it's just brutal, brutal stuff. Uh, the cost, Terrible. the cost of heroism, but, but thank goodness for, for people like that in our history. Um, we're, we're over time. Jeff Sussman, another incredible read, Holocaust fighters, boxers, resistors, and uh, uh, Avengers just dropped yesterday, I believe. Before I let you go, do you have any, any signings coming up, any events, or anything else that you want to make sure is said before I let you go? Before I leave it there yeah, I'm, I'm, and play I'm, yes? I'm going to be doing a Zoom, a Zoom talk from the East Hampton Library, a Zoom talk from the uh, Shelter Island Library, and an in-person talk at the West Hampton Library. And, and if you go to their websites, uh, you'll be able to see the dates and times of those talks. Okay, so we're looking at the Shelter Island Library, the right. East Hampton Library, and what was the final? Right. The West Hampton Library. And the West Hampton Library. Uh, the book is Holocaust Fighters, Boxers, Resisters, and Avengers. The author is Jeffrey Sussman. The segment is Thoughtful Thursday, underwritten by Guild Hall. The show is The Heart of the East End. The host is myself, Gianna Volpe, and the station is WLIWFM, Long Island's only local NPR radio station, 15 minutes before NPR News. We're leaving it there. We're playing some yes.